Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to give you my thoughts on Season 2 of iZombie on CW. Uh, I know this ended back in April, but I finally was able to catch up on the show. And I just really want to get my thoughts out there. I did my review of Season 1 quite a while ago. And uh, I honestly, if I really liked and enjoyed Season 1, Season 2 just took it to a whole another level for me. Oh my, I thought season two is just absolutely awesome, amazing, just a lot of fun in every way. Um, I Zombie, it's really exceeded my expectations. You know, I, I did, like I said, I did really like season one, but season two, it just got better and better. And it's really a show I'm looking forward to coming back now. It's a show I'm, I'm planning on reviewing once it does come back when I can. You know, a weekly and a episode episode basis. Um... And, you know, I don't need to go over, like, the, uh, setup story, because you can go and watch my, uh, review of season one for that. Um, but I think this is a show that people really do still overlook, though. Um, you know, because the concept and the whole premise, of course, you know, sounds silly, it's over the top, but, yeah, it obviously is. But this show is just really well done, you know, it's really consistent, um, with, what we see in every episode it's one of the it's one of the best in that regards of any show i've ever seen uh comedy drama or, or uh, otherwise um and the writing for it's actually really clever too and what i the biggest praise i can give this season uh in general um is that it just does such a fantastic job of mixing in uh you know humor with really uh well thought out like story building and also like these case of the week episodes um they're definitely some of the more entertaining case of the week episodes of any show um of course with live eating brains eating memories self crimes and such um but they just do a good job mixing in things like that with like uh, actual main story advancement and progression as well and so there's not an episode that just feels like a complete waste of time and this season did any this did uh, a lot better with that regard as well and another thing that's really great about it is it mixes in that humor with these more heartwarming or uh, you know more touching emotional serious character moments and I was really impressed by it in this season again um, the cast as a whole really I've really really grown to enjoy together I mean I've always liked uh, Rose McIver since I started the show you know and she just continues to do such a great job in season two um but actors like uh, Malcolm Goodwin um Robert Buckley Rohu Kali um I may have mispronounced his name but the actor who plays uh Robbie and uh David Anders they've all come together uh at such a coherent uh cast such a coherent main cast and also uh Allie, who plays uh, Peyton. Um, they just have such great on-screen chemistry together. It's very rare when I've seen on-screen chemistry like this. You know, they just to play off of each other really well. Um, it seems like they have a similar chemistry as friends in real life, um, you know, with the way they interact with each other. And you know, some of the best on-screen chem chemistry I've seen in a show, uh, you know, I think of uh, the U.S. version of being human, and that's a different discussion. I, I, I can go on and go into that another time. Um, but this uh, really shows what a good cast should be on this type of show, at the very least, I think. Um, and yeah, as far as the specifics of this season, of course, it starts off... Uh, well, it's going to be hard to go into the specifics of the show because there is a lot going on. Um... Of course, uh, the episode opens, you know, with a episode called Grumpy Old Liv. And, you know, three months have passed since Liv turned Blaine and Matry back to normal with the last remaining cure. As a side f effect, they can now detect other zombies. And uh, Major, he had an interesting character arc this season as well. Um, you know, he's working as a personal trainer. He ends up uh, you know, getting close to uh, Max Rager. And... You know, so he ends up being roped into this of being like this uh, zombie hunter who becomes known as the Chaos Killer. And, you know, he's doing his way to protect Liv because if he doesn't kill him, kill all these zombies on this list, they're going to have someone else do it and then they'll start with Liv. 
And, you know, I feel like uh, Major probably could have let others know about what was going on sooner. Um, we also had... But uh, I, I did, like, uh, uh, Robert Buckley's acting for all the scenes he was involved with this season. Um, we also had Minor, and uh, Minor, of course, being the daughter they had taken in. And, you know, this kind of sad what happened to Minor, you know, him, uh, Major, leaving him on a bus... And, you know, he was found by a good family, apparently, but he had that tracker thing on his collar and such. Um, and then Blaine, he had a pretty interesting character direction this season, too. Um, ever since i seen season one, you know, he is a character that, you know, we're not supposed to root for, but, you know, he's like that villain we can be entertained by, you know, he's that villain we can sort of like, you know, sort of love to hate really I guess um, but this season it really uh, it really took him in a different direction you know he's still that but at the same time he started we started to see a little bit of a different side to him um, we see him and uh, Peyton have certain scenes together um, that make you think there's a little bit more to him um, we meet his father in the season as well um, for some reason, I'm forgetting the actor's name right now. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, Robert Knepper. Um, he's done a lot of stuff. You know, he he had a really big role in uh, Prison Break, which is a series I still need to check out sometime. Um, he's just done tons of roles. He is also in a couple episodes of Shameless um, in season one, which I, I still need to watch more of, too. <laughs> um... And I was surprised I had such like a big actor for the role that I was happy with it. I liked uh, him and Blaine's back and forth together. We get a sense that Blaine had a really abusive childhood. And, you know, Blaine almost becomes a bit of an anti-hero by the end of the season, which I found to be pretty interesting. I was actually happy they took him in that direction. Um, because I didn't want him to... I didn't really want him to be killed off at the end of the first season. You know, I'm glad when they... I was glad when they kept him around. Yes, he killed Lowell, but at the same time, he's just so damn fun. <laughs> um, and uh, David Anders just, uh, you know, plays him to a T. Um, so I was happy when they started to change him a little bit, when they started to develop him a little bit more. And he also has this uh, rivalry and feud with uh, Mr. Boss. Um, again, I forget the actor's name who was playing him. Um... See if I can pull it up real quick. Hmm. Ah, just uh, please have patience with me, guys. You know how it goes. Let me see. I should just take another second. Ooh. Uh, well. Okay, found him. Found him, I mean. But yeah, uh, Eddie Jemison, um, who I actually recognize from uh, The Punisher um, back in 2004, I think it was. Yep, 2004. He was uh, Mickey in that movie, which is which was the Thomas Strain Punisher movie, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, he is sort of like the... He played sort of the guy uh, the Punisher is basically interrogating, and, you know, that... Uh, he actually ends up helping the Punisher you know, find out different information about the family. But anyway, he plays Mr. Boss in this season. I was pretty impressed with him um, because he actually he doesn't look that intimidating, but just the way he delivers his lines and the way he sort of carries himself in the role on the show, um, I just think he did a really good job. You know, he felt like he did have like power that he didn't really want to get close to um, as far as you know, in the crime world and such. And I liked the feud between him and Blaine in this season. You know, it was different to see Blaine sort of uh, struggling against someone else in this type of situation. Um, like I said, David Anders just plays the role really well. And, you know, he actually ends up, you know, killing Blaine at one point. You know, he ends up uh, cutting his throat. But luckily, the, uh, the whole effect of the cure that was supposedly in Blaine and Major had actually... Um, started to uh, wear off, and so they both ended up slowly turning back into zombies. So we get this really funny scene of uh, you know Blaine crawling out of a grave, <clears throat> excuse me, in his underwear, you know, and uh, walking around in front of a family and such, uh, which I thought was really fun. And he starts going to live and such for more help. 
And there's this point where he supposedly loses his uh, memory, and he starts sort of like being like petrified or like horrified of all the things he's done to people. Just like I can't believe I did that, you know. Um, and it's really debated whether he's like playing him for some reason or if he actually does forget things. But either way, it is he ends up us uh, saving Peyton again at the end of the season. The two also had sex earlier in the season, which Peyton regretted. But then she starts to see there's actually more to him. Um, it seems like a lot of a love triangle between uh, um, Blaine and Ravi and Peyton in the next season. But you know, it'll probably be good with the way they do it. You know, it's not going to be like all Vampire Diaries or something. Um, we get a really cool scene from. Uh, Blaine at the end of the season when he does rescue Peyton like I said he puts on these night vision goggles and he goes and just uh, shoots guys down left and right which I thought was really badass um yeah so Blaine's just awesome in the season uh it's really hard to say but my favorite characters in the show uh of course Liv is obviously my favorite you know the show wouldn't be what it is without Liv um but I think uh after Liv it's probably if I had to choose it's probably Babineau and Blaine for me I really do like Major, and it's close. It could sort of rotate at any time. But, uh, like I said, I did, Blaine, I just really enjoyed this season. I liked his direction. And Babineau, uh, I liked him the first season, but he got a lot more concentration this season, and uh, he really grew on me more and more. Um, he sort of became more than just, like, a, like a vehicle for Liv's investigations. Um, you know, we got some, like, flashes of what he used to be in when he was in Vice and such in Season 1, but he just became a lot more important and, revel and uh, relevant in uh, this season. Um, and his character goes on an interesting journey or uh, process, uh, because, of course, spoilers in the title, so you guys should already be aware of this, but of course there's going to be that one guy that says, Oh, you spoiled it for me, uh... Anyway, <laughs> um... Liv ends up telling Clive that, you know, she's a zombie, she ends up telling him about everything that goes on with the zombies and such, and which really made for a really, uh, serious and touching moment between the two, and Clive actually ends up covering for and sort of, like, shutting this whole case down to protect her and Major, which is a really, uh, you know, a really cool thing that he did, um, but he sacrificed a lot, he sacrificed this relationship he had with his FBI agent, um, and his career, which could have just, like, brought him further up, um, so it was really uh, nice to see how much he actually does care for Liv as a friend. Um, you know, he's friends with Major as well, but we get some nice scenes between him and uh, Liv especially that make you feel how close they actually are outside of their work too, which I am excited to see get more focus in Season 3 now that he knows about everything. And uh, Clive also had some, you know, got a lot more humor in this season too because we find out he's like a massive Game of Thrones fan. Uh, and there's this like recurring joke throughout one of the episodes where different people are told to ask Clive what George R. R. Martin's doing right now, and he makes this face and says, not writing. <laughs> uh, which I thought was really funny, and then uh, I think, I forget if it's Liv or someone else, but she she says like a line in, I forget if it's like the Dothraki language or something like that, and then Clive just recognizes it right away, and he gives her a you know, strange look. <laughs> um, yeah, so Babineau was really cool this season. Um, you know, Peyton, it was good to see her sort of come back to live um, after finding out what she was. You know, she had left uh, in the later part of season one. And it was good to see her sort of come back and reconnect with Liv and accept her after being going through her own personal thought process. So it was good to see her. Um, like I said, I like the stuff between her and Blaine. Um, Robbie, uh, you know, he's fun too. Um, you know, I do feel bad for him when he sees her with Blaine and such, but I think, I think Robbie will end up happy somehow at some point. Um, no matter what, um, and uh, Max Rager as a villain, um, you know, he did see him in season one, and he is sort of like our main antagonist for this season, um, him and Mr. Uh, Boss anyway, but it seems like Mr. Boss is probably going to go into season three, um, Max Rager, he was a pretty good villain, um, you know, not like the physical type, but again, sort of like Mr. Boss in the way that you, he has a lot of assets and uh, ways he can get to people and you know through other means. Um, I think Mr. Boss is already the better villain right now, but uh, Max Rager is sort of entertaining to see. You know, it seems with Major and stuff working out. Um, of course, live to the maximum more and such. Uh, you know, he also has this daughter uh, named uh, Rita who you know, sort of gets close to Major as Gilda. You know, she's uh, Liv's roommate. 
and you know she ends up you know screwing a lot of things up uh you know like you know sleeping with major when there's you know the back and forth between him and Liv and so not a good time to you know sort of get get to know him like that and she has caused this whole uh you know uh issue between major and Liv and it's really gratifying to see when Liv finally finds out that it was uh, her own roommate known as Gilda who's actually Rita that sent this photo to Major and Liv just you know punches her in the face and he just knocks her flat against the wall and onto the floor um, that was really badass um, but you know she got her own little payoff at the end of the season you know once she was uh, actually locked in this room by uh, Max himself um, I know his name's not actually Max Rager, but that's what people refer to him as a lot of the time. Um, so I'm going to do it the same way, it's just easier to remember. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, Max ends up, uh, you know, shutting the door on her when all these zombies are, you know, released. And she gets bitten and turned into a zombie, and uh, her dad basically keeps her locked in there as, like, a, an experiment, really. He says he's looking for the cure, but, you know, you know, he just doesn't care that much. And when shit goes down at the end of the season, we see her, she actually ends up getting to consume his brains, which is, you know, I didn't really like her, but I'm glad that she was the one to kill him, I guess, at least. Um, you know, the finale for this season, the final two episodes were just great, man. Um, but before we get into that, I also want to emphasize, again, how great Rose McIver was in this season. Um, again, you know, she was always the highlight of the show to me ever since the first episode. Uh, as she should be, really. Um, but I just think uh, the humor in the season was even better than in the first season. You know, we got some uh, personalities that she uh, would adapt. Um, you know, like there's this, uh, I think it was Zombie Bro, I think that was the name of one of the episodes, um, where she eats the brain of this, uh, you know, jock, sort of like. Jake, if Kitty's in there with you, will you send her out? I have some fish. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry about this. She's not. No. No. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, I'm a like full of zombie bro and hurting the brains of the you know frat guy. Um, you know, and her just uh, it, it's hard to describe. Um. But I have like a clip from it in my channel trailer. If you guys want to watch that, it's less than a minute long. Um, but personalities like that, then like a stripper, you know, and then another one where she like uh, awkwardly starts hitting on everyone, um, with, like a pour some sugar on zombie and stuff like that. It was just really funny. Um, there are pl plenty of other ones. I'm sure I'm forgetting, but every episode we get to see her sort of had this different personality and Rose McIver just says so well that you know she's really cr cute she's really awkward funny um and you know you really feel for in certain scenes too and then you know there's this one where she also becomes like a basketball coach <laughs> so she's really intense there's this one where she eats the brains of a stalker so she starts like you know, looking into like major's messages and such um there's this one where she eats like this guy who is uh trying to be like a vigilante or superhero and so she tries to do the same thing. So you can see her dressed up in a costume. You had to go along with Arrow and uh, Flash and such, which is uh, pretty funny. Um, there's this one called uh, Fifty Shades of Grey Matter, so you can guess what that would involve. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, Rose McIver, she's just an awesome uh, talent. You know, uh, she really needs more credit. The whole cast uh, deserves more credit, but Rose McIver is just fantastic. Um, like I said, she's really funny, cute, quirky, but then, then at the same time you can really feel for her and we can really relate to her too, and she's just an awesome lead character, um, uh, Olivia Moore is for sure. And uh, like I said, the final two episodes of the season were just great, you know, when they aired they went together as like a two-part finale, and the day I finished uh, watching the season, I was just going to watch like one before work and the other two afterward, but I ended up watching all three <laughs> before I went to work. Um, which is pretty surprising. I basically ends up, ended up uh, binge watching uh, like the last portion of the season over the couple, over a couple days. Um, I know people do uh, more and at a quicker rate than that, but that, that's pretty uh, rare for me. You know, I like a lot of shows. I watch a lot of shows, um, but I haven't really binged a show like that since uh, Dexter. Um, Dexter, when I first went through that, you know, I'd watch like four, sometimes four to five episodes a night. 
Um, and that, you know, of course, that was like the whole series and such, but uh, iZombie really has gotten my attention on like uh, a show has for quite a while. Um, definitely, it was some of my favorite shows out there now are iZombie, Originals, uh, The Hundred, The Walking Dead to an extent, I guess. Um, even though it's kind of fallen off the rocker a little bit. Um, I'm just into this variety of shows, and I absolutely love it. Uh, but like I said, the final two episodes of the season are great. Of course, the stuff I mentioned earlier with Clive finding out is all really well done. Uh, some people didn't expect him to find out as soon as he did. And when he did, I, I was actually worried that he might be killed off, but I was glad to see him make it through. Um, and then uh, the finale, Salvation Army. Um, we basically see this little zombie apocalypse break out, which is just awesome to see. Um, it was all contained within like Mac Max uh, Rager's facility when he was hosting this uh, party type of thing. Um, you know, so I feel like in like season three or four or another season, we're going to get some kind of like citywide apocalypse outbreak, um, which will be really, really epic as hell. Um, but this was really just really cool to see um, for like a fan of the horror genre and such. You know, it's a CW, so they can't show a lot of blood. Um, but there are moments that you're kind of surprised they showed as much as they did. You know, like I said, we see Rita eventually, you know, chowing down on. Uh, Max's brains, or at least like the shot of the aftermath of it, and there was a decent amount of blood in this, you know, with uh, Liv Major and Babino, you know, infiltrating the party, um, and Max Rager's actual name is Vaughn, by the way, I'm sorry about that, but uh, all these zombie experimental, you know, types end up getting out, and it's just chaos all around you, of course, uh, Liv and Major are able to uh, avoid many attacks from them because they're zombies themselves. And it's good to see Major sort of embrace that. It's kind of funny to see Robert Buckley sort of acting out, him being addicted to drumming and such. Um, I'm excited to see more personalities for him in Season 3, hopefully. Should be fun. Um, but with Babino, he is in more danger in this episode because he's a human and, and Liv offered to scratch him so he'd be protected. But Babino didn't want to do that. And you know, there was a moment where a zombie, zombie jumped up from behind when one uh, sort of ends up uh, pinning him on the ground, which where I was really worried about him. But it was really cool to see him make it through, and it really felt like they were at risk, though, you know, because they were running low on ammo, and, you know, even though they weren't going to go after Liver Major, um, if they attacked him enough, they, if they were trying to defend Babino enough, they'd eventually probably try to kill them, too, I guess. Um, so it was intense, and I was worried, and they are only saved by this, uh, I think her name, let me see. Um, okay, we meet this private military military contractor named uh, Vivian Stoll, um, who I, I remember in a role in uh, Step Brothers with Will Ferrell, actually. I think she played his therapist. Um, but she turns out to be this uh, military contractor, but she's also a zombie, you know, leading an organization that's thinking of themselves as, as this uh, new world order. She ends up shooting down quite a few zombies herself, but then she ends up eating the leftover brains of the band that was performing there. Um, so that's a pretty cool reveal. It looks like she'll be the main antagonist for season three, uh, maybe more, um, along with Mr. Boss, of course. But I think Mr. Boss will probably be killed in season three for sure. Um, hopefully by Blaine. Um, you know, so I think she, you know, she's a pretty good different type of villain for the show to have. You know, a little bit bigger than I'd expect to expect him to have on the show. Um, so I did like that. Um, and I forgot to mention a character named Drake in the season as well. He sort of became like a different, another love interest for Liv. Um, you know, she was worried she was dating a criminal, but he turns out to be an under undercover cop, and then she's worried that he was, ended up being killed by Mr. Boss, but uh, with all, the whole major chaos killer thing, he had to take uh, Drake in. And he wasn't killing him, he was actually putting him in freezers to still keep him alive. And uh, Drake ends up being taken by uh, Max Rager or Bond and the rest of them. And he has unfortunately turned into like this feral, you know, sort of full on zombie. And uh, when he comes out and attacks Babino, you know, he lives forced to put him down, which is sad to see. Um, but I did like Drake, and I, I thought things were going to work out for him a little bit better. But I sort of felt like he was just more of a seasoned character, I guess. But I did like the guy who played him, I thought he was a likable guy. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to mention specifically. Um, 
And yeah, like I said, basically the group led by Vivian, you know, they have plans to establish Seattle as an international zombie headquarters or something. We'll probably figure out more about our motivations and plan in Season 3, but still a pretty cool setup. And I'm excited for Season 3 because it's going to have a lot of change dynamics, you know, like with uh, Babino, it's going to be different with that. And of course, it's still going to be different with uh, Major and Liv, both being zombies, and it's been like that for the past while. Um... Like I said, Vivian, it'll be different. Blaine, it'll be cool to see his uh, changing dynamic, too. And, uh, yeah, um, so I Zombie Season 2, just amazing. It's as hilarious as ever. It's probably funnier than ever. Um, this, the serious major part of the story, it's... I mean, like, the serious, like, uh, big part of the story itself, um, it, it gets more and more impressive. You know, stuff with the Babino and Liv herself is really great. Um, the personalities were more entertaining than ever, more awkward than ever. Um, at the same time, it really gets you in the heart, too. You know, you really feel for these characters, and the writing's just really clever on both ends. Um, if I had, like, one critique about the story this season, um, you know, I wish I would have seen uh, Liv's brother and uh, mom, um, because with her, you know, saying no to, like, uh, do the whole blood transfer at the end of season one, um, we, only hear, we only see a little bit, of, little bit about it at the beginning of the season, and then we don't really see him again. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if we've seen him at all, really. Um, so I, was, I felt it was a little bit weird that we didn't really get any concentration on that. So I hope they sort of bring that back in as a factor for the season, especially with the old military contractor thing. It sounds like it'll be a bigger story. Um, but I did think it was weird that we didn't have uh, more of a continuation of what was going on with that. We got it mentioned once in a while, but really didn't feel like it, it existed anymore, which is weird. But overall, I, I just really love this show. Uh, I thought it was a great season. It's going to be hard for season three to top, but I'm definitely sold on it now. Um, I can't wait to buy the season on Blu-ray, hopefully, when it's released in July. It's supposed to release on July 12th, by the way. Um, it's just a show that's so worth checking out. You know, It gives you the humor. It gives you the heart. It's just awesome. Uh, I can't say that enough. I, I sound repetitive as hell, but it's just great. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about Season 2 and the show as a whole. I think it's definitely worth giving a chance. I think you'll really like it. I know some people don't, but, hey, fuck it, I enjoy the hell out of it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I'll probably be you know, doing weekly reviews of it or reviews as soon as I can of each new episode when Season 3 starts. But really looking forward to talking about more on my channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, I know it's a little bit long, but, you know, it is what it is. It's a great show. But yeah, catch you guys next time. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and theprincipaldead.com. Catch you guys tonight for my review of the two-hour finale of Penny Dreadful, which I'm really looking forward to. I actually took work off for that. And uh, yeah, so catch you guys next time. Peace.